A Warwickshire woman who lost her husband after he was given contaminated blood saying she faces losing the home they bought together. Liz Hooper's husband, Paul, died in December after being treated in the 80s. She told us that delays in compensation payments for those affected means she's struggling to make ends meet. They don't seem to have any urgency about them. They don't seem to have any sympathy for the plight that I'm in and 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 it's not just me there are there are many many others that are in the same situation BBC Coventry and Warwickshire Seven minutes past seven. Thanks for choosing us. Now, the widow of a Warwickshire man who died after being infected with a contaminated blood could lose her home. Back in the 1970s and 80s, Paul Hooper from Kyneton was one of thousands of people giving blood that was contaminated, leaving many with hepatitis C and HIV. Now his wife Liz has had her monthly support payment stopped and she simply can't pay her mortgage. So not only has my, my husband been taken away from me, I'm now in a position where I'm losing the home that Paul and I bought. You know, I've, I've got no income. I'm having to rely on my mom, who's 86, and my son to help me out to so that I can afford to live and eat. And that they 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 don't seem to have any urgency about them. They don't seem to have any sympathy for the plight that I'm in and 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 it's not just me there are there are many many others that are in the same same situation you know we we're all in this situation where we can't afford to buy even the simplest simplest of things bread and milk and things of that nature because we just haven't got any money in I've uh, currently in my purse at the moment I've got 78 pence and and that's that's all I've that's that's all I've got. You'll hear from Liz a bit later on in the program. The payments came uh, from a pot of money called the Infected Blood Support Scheme. But is it ethically, morally right for anyone to be in this position? Let's speak to Timothy James, who is a lecturer in law and medical ethics. Good morning, Timothy. Good morning. What moral responsibility does the government have here? Well, it. Undoubtedly, the case that uh, it was as a result of government decisions or you know, that there was, uh, you know, NHS decisions um, that the contaminated blood was was imported and was used. So they've accepted that they have a responsibility. Now, uh, yeah, I, I'm left with so many questions about uh, this situation, about why this lady has absolutely no money, because she has exactly the same rights as anybody else, uh, you know, to benefits to pensions, to, to go out and work and earn, and everything else. And I want to know why she's so totally dependent uh, on these support payments that my understanding is were originally introduced for the people who were caring for and looking after the patients who had these long-term and ultimately, in many cases, fatal illnesses as a result of the contaminated blood. Mm. She's, yeah, she's widowed. She's no longer caring for uh, her husband, who, who, who died as a result of this. And I want to know what it is exactly that has put her in this situation. Because, yes, obviously the government has a moral responsibility to people who are harmed in this way. But, hey, doesn't it, the government have a responsibility to anybody who's got only 78p in their purse? Mm. Well, ordinarily, uh, you'd have to argue that if you if you quit your job to care for your long loved one and they passed away, you'd be no longer entitled uh, to those benefits. In, 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 in the normal course of things, yeah, you, uh, it would be expected for you to do what you can to uh, support yourself like like anybody else. But if you're unable to do so, you know, there's universal credit. There's this, that, and the other. I don't know how old this lady is. You know, uh, she, maybe she should, uh, if her mother's in her 80s, maybe she's approaching pension age and should be enti- uh, entitled to pensions, and so on. And I want to know, is, are we missing something here? Or, or um, is the withdrawal of this monthly payment a perfectly reasonable thing to do over time, or something mm. where because she's received it, she's not entitled to any, anything else. And I find that last bit hard to believe. Well, we'll be hearing her story later on in the show. But ethically, mm. uh, you know, like we say, it just seems wrong that if 
something's happened where, you know, it's completely out of your control. Her husband was given this contaminated blood. It's resulted in her having to give up her job to care for him. He's now died. Yeah. That she's in this situation. What are her rights, do you think? Well, uh, uh, if, we, uh, if we're talking about her moral rights, uh, you know, you've already put your finger on it. However tragic this is, not to basically... Ne- be supported for the rest of her life uh, necessarily, but to such support as, as, as is needed for her to be able to get her life back on track. Um, uh, you know, nobody should be in a position where they get absolutely nothing. Um, but uh, the moral responsibility that arises out of, uh, uh, out of these mistakes that were made, it's much like the moral responsibility that arises out of a, yeah, a negligence action. Somebody, if somebody's harmed in one of our hospitals, um, then uh, th- that harm which results from the negligence should be compensated mm. so far as money can do it. And, of course, we recognize that ultimately what she didn't want, she didn't want the money, she wanted her husband. But, um, uh, uh, you know, so far as money can do it. Mm. But the point is, it, it isn't, um, you know, just here is a lump of cash, uh, go away and, and live your life. It's... Uh, it's to put you back so far as possible in the position you should have been in if the wrong had never been done. OK, thanks very much, uh, Timothy James, the uh, ethical expert. We have spoken to the NHS department responsible uh, for these uh, for these payments and they said the uh, NHS Business Services Authority took over in November last year. Before this, there were five different schemes which were set up to provide support to beneficiaries. Since November, there's been a review of the scheme. The scheme is now complete and we will be contacting people this week with the details of the new discretionary support including the new application process. But I suppose that doesn't help Liz on a day-to-day having to rely on her 86-year-old mom uh, for food and you know getting through the day. We'll be hearing her story uh, later on in the show. We're at the home of Liz Hooper in Kyneton this morning. Now, Liz's husband, Paul, died in December after being infected with hepatitis C and HIV from contaminated blood products. Well, this morning, the estate agents are coming to Liz's home. Her home's going on the market, and she says she's lost her home because the grants and benefits she was receiving when Paul was alive have been stopped. Okay, more on that in just a moment. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. The Breakfast Show. With Trisha Duden. Seven minutes past eight here on Breakfast with Trish. Thanks for choosing us. I hope your Wednesday goes well. Now, don't go anywhere in the next couple of minutes because the this is an amazing story. It's our top story this hour. The widow of a Warwickshire man who died after being infected with contaminated blood could lose her home. Let's cross over to Kyneton. Richard Williams is with Liz Hooper. Morning, Rich. Yes, morning, Trish. We're in the kitchen of Liz Hooper's home this morning. We've got a picture of Paul here as well, who died in December, a picture of Liz and Paul at a wedding. And Liz, um, Paul died after being infected with contaminated blood products. Just explain to us what happened. Um, Paul had um, haemophilia and he originally was on um, cryo um, home treatments, but he it, it, that was then modernised and upgraded to using uh, real plasma products that they got from blood. Um, the, the government got the bloods that they used from America um, and it, it was uh, sourced from prisons, amongst other things, prisons and included drug addicts and some things like that. Um, and as a result, when Paul started to use the um, Factor 8 blood product from those he was contaminated with HIV and hepatitis C and he had to live with that for the 30 years he then years. lived with that for from that point on up to his, to his death so 30 plus years yeah now the government have recognized that the, that screening should have taken place in the 80s and they started a scheme after that which was a payment scheme of grants for people who'd been affected because Paul's case is one of two and a half thousand people nearly who've died just explain to us what you were getting in terms of financial support up until Paul's death Paul had um, originally had £1,250 from what was the McFarlane Trust, which dealt with HIV sufferers, and £1,250 from the Skipton Fund, which dealt with uh, hepatitis C victims. This was then updated uh, to become the EIBSS um, last year. It was 
updated and, and became a new scheme. So up until Paul's death, you were getting about £3,000? We were getting about £3,000 from the government grants um, through EIBSS, and then he had um, um, D, uh, DLA, and he also had a disability living allowance, and also ESA. And what were you getting? I was getting £62 a carers. So when Paul died, what happened then? It all stopped. Paul, because obviously he was no longer ava- no longer alive, so I could he couldn't I couldn't have what he was having because I wasn't I wasn't contaminated with it, and um, the carers stopped because Paul was no longer with me, so I didn't have to care for him anymore. Now you told me this morning the estate agents are coming around. You've had to sell your home because you've fallen into the mortgage arrears. What support is there available to you in terms of financial support at the moment? So, for example, are you working? Can you claim income support? Um, I do a small part-time job at a local livery yard um, and uh, I have also have what they call the top-up payment um, of £1,250. Uh, I did apply for universal credit, but after much to in and fro in by the time it came to the point that I'd got this little job and that I was self-employed it it was it just the, the payments for universal credit weren't there they didn't help me at all so I don't have that how do you feel towards the government now we're sitting in your kitchen the house is very quiet Paul's not obviously here anymore when you look at that photo this morning you see yourself and Paul what would you think make of things today in your situation Paul would be, he'd be devastated. He was, he was always a man that, he was always saying that he wanted to do the best for me and uh, he wanted to, to, you know, provide for me. Um, and he was desperate to survive so that our mortgage could be paid off um, because we've not got that long left on it and that I would then be secure in this home. I wouldn't have to find a mortgage. I'd only have to find the day-to-day bills. But obviously, that wasn't meant to be. I know it's a difficult question, but I need to ask it. Some people would say, uh, Paul isn't here anymore, so that that caring money isn't paid. Why isn't working more hours for you an option to keep the roof over your head? I have to care for my mum. I'm one of... My my mum... Uh, has a care package through social services and um, I'm one of the four carers that has to help look after my mum. She's fully disabled through osteoarthritis. So, you know, whatever I work has to work through, work around that. Now, these grants that were paid out to, as I say, 3,700 people have been affected with those contaminated problems. The people who've done that scheme and your situation today, if you were sitting in front of a table with them on the other side... What would you want to tell those people? I would want to say, if the government hadn't contaminated Paul with these viruses, this terminal illness, um, he would still be here. And I wouldn't be in this situation. He wouldn't have been in this situation. Yes, he was a haemophiliac. And yes, that that has its day-to-day struggles, but it's more than you know, livable with. We've we've got now got the factor that is not using man made products. They, they 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 make it in a lab, so to speak. So there would be no there's no future problems with him getting anything like that. So it would just be, you know, you contaminated him. You took him away from me. I wouldn't be in this situation without you. I don't I don't want compensation. I'm not in this to have thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds compensation. What do you want then? I want to be able to live peacefully and quietly. I'm moving in with my mom, yep. and I want to be able to help towards the um, day-to-day running of my mom's house, um, and that's all. So I, some some sort of financial support. Just the financial support. I'm 53 years old. Um, I've been out of the working environment now for six years. I worked for the NFU for 13 years. And how will you feel today when the estate agents come around? Sad. Very sad. I'm losing... We bought this house to, to renovate and grow old in. And it's going. And I can't stop it. I can't... I can't... I just can't stop it from going. And I wish I could. 
and I wish that Paul would come in through the door and just say, hi, posh bird. Is that what he used to call you, posh bird? He used bird? to call me his posh bird because he was a brummy. <laughs> so he always used to say I was a posh bird. Um, you know, I just, I just want Paul back. I don't want to go through this. And I just want to live a quiet, peaceful life. I want to buy a few chickens and feed my chickens, look after my mum. Liz, I appreciate you sharing your story with us this morning. So there you go, Tricia. Liz's story is probably mm. a very common one because, as I say, Paul lost his life in December, but uh, some 2,400 people have died as a result of the contaminated blood. Around 7,000 people received those blood products in the 80s. Of course, it was pre-screening. So, uh, yeah. it's, you know, the government have accepted that, that that situation shouldn't have happened. But we, yeah. hearing Liz's story here this morning... Absolutely. We you live, can see the impact. Yeah. It's not just those directly affected. Absolutely. We wish Liz well. <laughs> Sad day indeed. Uh, we've spoken to the NHS department responsible for these payments. The uh, NHS Business Services Authority took over in November last year. Uh, before this, there were five different schemes which were set up to provide support to beneficiaries. Since November, there's been a review of the scheme and the review is now complete. And they say there'll be con- contacting people this week with the details of the new discretionary support, including the new application process. Anyone currently receiving income top-ups will receive their July payment as normal. New discretionary payments will start in August.